Access more. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast. I'm Candace. No matter who you are, life can feel like a roller coaster. But in the beauty and the chaos, life is full of love, joy, and kindness. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast. I'm Candace. <laughs> but this podcast isn't about me, it's about you. I'm here to introduce you to some of my friends and to have open conversations about life's challenges, celebrations, and everything in between. I am so excited to introduce to you my season one guest host, Tara Lee Cobble. Now, Tara Lee finds so much joy in talking about the Bible, and that's why I asked her to join me today. She hosts the Bible Recap Podcast, where she walks listeners through the Bible in a year or two, if you're like me. (laughs) I can't wait for you to be a part of our conversations. Before we jump in, I want you to know about our favorite place for you to watch and listen to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast, Access More. The Access More network is home to great shows from people like Christine Kane, Bob Goff, Lisa Harper, Torin Wells, and so many more. And we're thrilled that season one of the Candace Cameron Bure podcast will be available there too. To watch full video episodes of my show, go to accessmore.com, the Access More app, or you can follow the link directly from candace.com. I'll also have a link in all of my show notes. And we're talking about God. We're talking about the Trinity. Mm -hmm. But in this week's episode, we're going to specifically talk about God the Father. Yes. And I just want to start out by talking about some earthly dads, maybe some TV earthly dads. Ooh. You've had some of the best of the best. Do you have any anything you want to share <laughs> with us about your TV dads? I've had some great TV dads over the years. Let's see, John Goodman played my dad in the movie Punchline. He was also on Roseanne and now The Connors and obviously so many amazing movies. He was, he was fantastic. Um, Alan Thicke played my dad. TV dad in a movie called Let It Snow. And Alan, of course, played my brother's dad on Growing Pains for, what, seven years they were on that show. And Alan was great. Um, I have such great memories of Alan. Tom Arnold played my dad in another Christmas movie. That was interesting. I loved Tom. We had some some kind of like interesting stories. I'm like, dare I tell some of them? I don't know. (laughs) Of course, the most beloved dad that I ever had on TV was Bob Saget. Mm. And uh, I miss him dearly. But he was, he wasn't just a great TV dad. He was one of my closest friends, Mm. which was incredible. And that's why I miss him so much. Mm. But I feel like Bob was more of a friend than my dad, because I feel like some of the things that I did with Bob, like I wouldn't do with my dad, (laughs) like going to rock concerts and going to, you know, I not clubs, but just, we used to like drive around and listen to music with Mm -hmm. some of the other cast members from full house. And Mm -hmm. he was like the, my older friend that was really cool. Yeah. That would make me cool. Yeah. So, so like you said, more of a friend, less of a dad. Yes. Um, and like, it sounds like you guys had an incredible relationship. Mm-hmm. He was a good TV dad and a good a person. Yes. And your own dad took you to church for the first time. Uh-huh. Do you have some fun memories about your your earthly dad who actually yeah. you are related to genetically? <laughs> yes. So I love my dad. My dad's name is Robert and we are very close. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, We have a little thing in our family because, so I have two older sisters and an older brother. I'm the baby of four and I'm number one (laughs) to my dad. I am number one. So do the others know that? (laughs) Um, Yeah. They They don't always agree with that, but they know that I'm number one. And then sometimes if my dad is, you know, not happy with me, he's like, okay, number two. And I'm like, oh, oh, knife in the heart, knife in the heart. What do I have to do? I need to be number one oh, with him goodness. all the time. But he's always said like, oh, of all the kids, I, I get his humor. My dad mm. has kind of a very dry, sarcastic sense of humor mm-hmm. and I love it. <laughs> and he will tell, talk about stories, fixing the house. My dad was a public school teacher for 35 years, but he's also been like the handyman for 
our home and everyone. And so when he goes and fitch, fixes a light switch, um, I, you know, my mom gets bored of looking at the light switch. So I will always happily go look at the light switch and see the mechanics behind which he did it and then repainted uh. and scrubbed the surface around it and how much brighter that light is now. And if you look at the sheen off of this versus that, and I just listen and wow. I love it. <laughs> okay. So you, you appreciate his attention to detail. I do. You're there to praise I all do. his handiwork. <laughs> yes. Of course he loves you. Of course. Oh we, my goodness. I have some funny stories. I'm going to, I'm going to share a little bit more yeah. because growing up, we used to have a lot of fun going to the mall together because my dad was not a shopper mm -hmm. and d didn't really know how to dress himself. So he'd always love going with us girls okay. or my mom, Barbara, and, and we would help him pick out outfits. But every time we would go into the mall, he thought it was hysterical. He'd say like, go run in the store display and pretend you're a mannequin. <laughs> But it was like every store we passed, you like, go oh be a gosh. mannequin, go be a mannequin. I don't know why it made us all laugh. <laughs> and then we'd buy him clothes and then we'd put color coded dots on the back of the tag so that he knew if this color shirt had a red dot and he found a pair of pants that had a red dot, those matched. What? Or if they had the gray dot and this, if they didn't have the same color dot, he couldn't wear them together. Listen, that is a... You need to market that idea. That is a brilliant, you're in the clothing industry. You have I a whole know. clothing line. You should put I dots know. in the tags. Let people know what matches. I know. You're all, your dad was onto <laughs> something. Was that his idea? Or? I think it was my mom's. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. What about your dad? <laughs> <laughs> um, my, so I am the youngest of six. So we're both youngest. Uh -huh. um, three boys and three girls in my family. And my dad, my dad became a Christian shortly after my parents got married. And he became... Like he, he thought he was a Christian before and then realized, I guess, that he wasn't a Christian mm -hmm. and he became a Christian. Wow. And it was, from what I hear, I wasn't alive then, but just transformative for him. It became the focal point of his life. And so my dad was the person that I remember being so annoyed by how much he loved God mm -hmm. as a child, because what that meant was at the gas station, he would go to the full service pump so that there would be a guy there to like pump the gas. And my dad would have like five minutes with him to share the gospel. <laughs> yes. um, or he would like park the car at the far end of the parking lot and make the guy push his groceries to the far end so to have that time. Wow. We would leave for church so early on Sundays because we had all these people to pick up. And if we saw anybody walking along the road on the way there, he would stop and roll down the window and invite them to jump in and go to church with us. No way. And so I'm like, you know, sitting on the laps of strangers on the way to church every, because my dad is just so <laughs> gregariously inviting people to church and talking about Jesus. And we were just like, I remember one time we were sitting at a gas station. It's hot and got to turn the car off. So the air is off. All the, it's the summer. And one of my siblings is like, what is taking so long? And somebody else goes, dad's sharing the gospel again. <laughs> It was just womp, like, womp. I'm like talking about Holding Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was, but it's one of those things that he's still, that's who he is. Yeah. And it's just a part of the fabric of my father. Mm. And he's still that way to this day. Wow. Like he had, uh, he had to go for a um, heart surgery and he's in there like talking to the nurses about Jesus. Like it's just who he is. Yeah. And I've become much more endeared to that over time. So. Yeah. I love that. I guess I, I could follow up just about my dad in, in a Christian sense that, mm -hmm. um, because I shared, he took us to church for the first time and was not a man of faith. Yeah. And my dad is a Christian mm -hmm. and loves the Lord, but it took him many, many years. I think he was the last one in our whole family. Wow. Yeah. He has a very unique perspective, but he went from not believing at all to then like leading uh, pre preaching at a prison ministry what? and having like three Bible studies at the house. And we're oh. like, this is awesome. I love that. Yeah. I have a, I have a soft spot for prisoners. So I, I love that he did that. Yeah. We've had, we both had really good dads. It sounds like you've, even, you've had multiple good dads, Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but I, I know that for a lot of people, that's not their story. Like no. for a lot of people, they don't have a father that they would consider good. And some people can't even identify who their father might be. Like the exactly. father's been absent or maybe they don't know who their father was. Yep. Um, and so I know for a lot of people that's been 
that can be really formative in how you view God the Father if you don't have a yes. good earthly representation of that. Yes. And um, as as good as our fathers have been, they still fall short of representing the mm-hmm. goodness of God the Father. Mm-hmm. Like he's the he's the perfect father that that other fathers should should try to live up to. But the good news is for people who don't have that good father on earth, he he can still father you in the way that you should be fathered, in the way that he desires for you to be fathered. And so like that's for anybody who's listening or watching who you don't have the dad who has loved you yeah. like that. I'm so glad to know that that God the Father can father you in those spaces and those vacancies and the voids. Um, because I know it could be a hard thing to latch on to. Absolutely. And I'm I'm looking forward to you sharing more about that because I do have some very close friends that have uh have either no relationship with their dad, have had abusive re- relationships with their fathers. So it's yeah. hard to even, you can learn about God the Father intellectually, but it's still a very hard bridge to mm-hmm. gap mm-hmm. when you haven't felt that physical or in-person fatherly love. Right. I love Everything about Christmas and Great American Family Channel is the place to find your new favorite holiday movies all year round. You might be wondering how to watch Great American Family Channel. You can text Christmas to 877-999-1225 for more details. And for you Full House fans, they have all the Full House and Fuller House reruns too. Text Christmas to 877-999-1225. Okay, so let's talk about that. Can you tell us the distinction between God the creator and God the father? Yes, yeah. So what's interesting about the many beliefs about God is that some people view him as like the ruler of the universe and some people think of him as the creator of the universe and he is both of those things. But the primary word that he has given us to identify for him, God the Father, is Father. That's the name he wants to be known by. And what's so cool about that is how relational it is. We're not just creations. Mm -hmm. We're children. And there's something much more beautiful about that. Like, I'm sure you have three kids. Yeah. I'm sure you value your three kids more than anything you've made. Like, more than anything, absolutely. Like, And and there goes into a whole, you go into a whole different, protective gear too, when it's your children Uh that you will do anything and put your own life on the line for your children. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Over any other human being. That's one of the reasons it's such a beautiful image is because we do see in the story of God, that very thing happens. Um, But one thing that's kind of cool is, you know, we talked in the last episode about how God has existed from eternity past. And for a long time in eternity past, there wasn't creation. There wasn't a world. There wasn't humans. There wasn't the universe. There was just God from eternity past. And so even before he creates, you have to create to become a creator. So even before he created, he was still father. He was always first and foremost father, always relational. It's more about being than doing. It's all about the relationship that he's in. See, and and having a good relationship with my father, that immediately connects me. And I'm like, oh, he's a father. <laughs> like, yeah, that's amazing. And I immediately think of words like he's protective. He's um, he's looking out for my best interest. He wants what's good and right for me. He's going to guide me. Mm-hmm. Um so I naturally have a really good in- inclination when when I think about him as God the Father. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for those people, the listeners or viewers who haven't had that, mm-hmm. who don't have that earthly aspect to connect mm-hmm. to, or maybe they don't have children of their own to be able to relate to it from the other vantage point, think of what the father you always dreamed of would be like. And that is... That is... God is the best example yeah, of that even possible. better of, yeah. than what you can dream yeah. about. And so I love that he's given us that term Mm -hmm. to let us know how relational he is and how much he wants a relationship with us. And that that was his intention when he created us. He was father before he was creator. And I just think that really helps set us up to understand him quite a bit better. Um, If you, you, you sort of referenced, alluded to this a minute ago, but when you think about yourself as a child of God, Mm -hmm. like recognizing that you're, you're not just a creation of God, but you're a child of God, like, you're part of his family. 
what does that mean to you? And has there been a time when you've felt that more acutely? Like what, what's a story that sort of connects you back to being a child of God? Yeah. As I mentioned, I have really good feelings about that. It makes me, it makes me feel special. Mm -hmm. I think because I am like daddy's little girl, um, that makes me, it makes me feel protected, protected Mm -hmm. as a child of God. And I, I think as we, as we grow older and as we age, there's parts of us that will always feel like that little girl or little yeah. boy mm-hmm. that we were. It's very easy to trigger those emotions or those feelings, even mm-hmm. when we're, you know, I'm 46 years old. And sometimes, you know, if something embarrassing happens, I can all of a sudden go back to like, oh my gosh, when I was five and you feel oh, embarrassed yeah. or, mm-hmm. um, or if, you know, someone shames you and you just resort back to like, oh, I feel like a little child yeah. with these things. And so they're, they're easy to, to trigger those emotions of feeling childlike, but in the, in the bigger scheme of things, when I mm-hmm. feel childlike I, because of the loving home that I came from, it makes me feel protected and thought yeah. of and cared for and mm-hmm. loved. Yeah. Um, and so I, I just naturally think of God in that way mm-hmm. that he wants the best for me. Yeah but in a way that truly is the best for me, not in the way that I think is the best for me, because just like my parent, they're going to give me guidelines and boundaries and guardrails mm-hmm. to say, hey, you might want to do this. That's not in your best interest. Right. And then, you know, as we're teenagers, we just do it anyway, <laughs> and then we right. live and learn. But that's what I feel about God. He, he has my best interest in mind, and mm-hmm. he's going to guide me mm-hmm. until I get there. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so freeing. I mean, I'm, there are so many prayers that I have prayed that things that I thought were best that he said no to. Mm-hmm. They're not an unanswered prayer. He answered no is an answer. You know, he still yep. answered that prayer. He's not distant or inattentive. He's listening. He just said, no, that's not in your best interest. And as time passes, you start to go, oh, thank God. Candace, yes. I would have so many, I'd be married to so many terrible men. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, thank you <laughs> yeah. that you, that you said thank no you to Lord. all those men I wanted to marry. Yes, um, yes. But uh, I love, he, you know, the God who exists outside of time, who knows everything, who loves you infinitely. If he says no, that's his kindest possible answer. Yes. He never does harm to his kids. He doesn't love selfishly. He loves generously and abundantly. And um, what has been challenging for me as a person who grew up in the church and um, you know, having a lot of conversations with other believers, other Christians who have been in that same space is I found that there's a tendency for us to view God, the father as the mean one in the Trinity, like the one who's Mm. like killing people and striking things down and all this and making all these rules. And then people tend to view Jesus, God, the son as the nice one and the Holy spirit, God, the spirit as like, he's kind of the weird, mysterious one. Like, I don't really understand him very much, but People are often, in general, if you ask people, who are you more drawn to? God the Father, God the Son, or God the Spirit? Um, often, like, first, what would your answer be? <laughs> I know, I was just thinking. Which of the well, three persons is- of the Trinity would you be most drawn to? Well, who I'm, I'm most, I, I think I'm drawn to the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. um, the most. Yeah. But each distinct person. person mm-hmm gives me different feelings. Yeah. I just, I do have feelings. There's a different way to connect with each of them. Yeah, exactly. But who I'm drawn to, who I want with me all the time, Uh every second of Uh the day is the Holy Spirit. Well, good news, because you got that. Yeah. (laughs) 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 Check. Um, (laughs) He's drawn to you too. That's why he's never leaving. Um, But generally, if you ask anybody that, and I'd be mm-hmm. curious to know what the listeners and viewers think yes. as well. Like who, who is your person, the father, the son, the spirit, who are you most drawn to? Um, because most people will probably say Jesus mm-hmm. or the spirit and very few people will say God, the father. And they'll, they'll often give like, Oh, he seems so angry until Jesus shows up on the scene. Well, that, that is something I might have, I might, that's something I might have said before I read through the whole Bible and saw that Jesus is actually there the whole time. (laughs) Like, it's not that God, the father was angry and Jesus like shows up and is like, Hey, calm down. You're taking things out of control. Like let's reel it in. Right. 
No, like they've all three eternally existed in perfect unity. And scripture tells us that they all have the same personality, character, will. They are unified in their character and their personality and will. Jesus, the, scripture says that Jesus is the exact imprint of the Father's nature. And that the Spirit is the one who, who shows us all that in our hearts, but that Jesus is the one who demonstrated it to the world. Jesus came to show us what God the Father is like. Jesus is pointing back to the Father. The Spirit is pointing to the Son and the Father. And so anything that we see about Jesus that's beautiful or that we see about the Spirit that's beautiful, the Father has those same attributes himself. They all ha are unified in their personality. And so for a person who feels alienated from God the Father, but drawn to Jesus and the Spirit, keep getting to know him because the more you get to know him, the more you're going to see that God the Father has all those attributes too. Wow. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever, I don't know that I've ever thought about it that way or thought about God that way. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I have thought of him very distinctly in those three mm -hmm. persons, mm -hmm. even though I know he's one, but didn't think that they all necessarily embodied the exact that, same attributes. Yeah. And they have different roles in how they function with mm -hmm. humanity. Mm -hmm. So they each, that's what, in one of the ways that's how they display their distinctness is they contain the same attributes, character and will, but the way each person acts out of that will is different, but it's unified. So creation, God, the father gives the creation command. God, the son does the manual labor of creation, builds the earth. Colossians one tells us that Jesus is the one who built the earth which is bonkers to me. Like, wait, I'm like, say that again. Cause I think my, I think I just like blanked out. <laughs> say those again. Colossians one and, and John one in the new Testament, both of those books tell us that Jesus is the one who laid the foundations mm -hmm. of the earth. He built the world. Like he did the manual labor of creation. So God, the father spoke the creation commands, like let there be light. Mm -hmm. um, those are the commands that he spoke. Jesus did the work. God, the son has always had this really interesting relationship with physical elements of things. Mm -hmm. And he, he embodied, he became embodied for us in the physical realm. And he's mm -hmm. the one who created the physical realm. And then God, the spirit hovers over everything, sustaining it and approving of it. They all are there in Genesis one. And even in Genesis one God says, let us make man in our image. Yes. So there's this very interesting plural language mm -hmm. in scripture. It's not a singular language. It's a plural language. Yep. And they're all there at creation, doing their thing, working on the same goal, having the same will, working together in tandem, but with each their own. Right. So it's fitting that you think of them distinctly because they are distinct, but they are unified in, in will and character. Wow. It's incredible that God, the triune God, created the earth, built it, and then sustained it with all three persons, yeah. but all in one. Yeah. God, th that is one of the, like, that's the beginning of the story of God deciding to enter into relationship with us. He says he's had this planned all along. Like this has always been the plan. And at the right time, he set it in motion. And I, like, to me, it just makes me, I love a plan. I feel loved when a plan is put in place. Mm -hmm. When, you know, when your husband takes you out on a date and he's like, I've got the restaurant, I've got the time. Yes. Here's, uh, everything's set up yes. and planned. It's just like, I feel so loved. Like, I feel so, you, you paid such good attention to me and my heart and everything. Yes. And like, that is what God the Father has entered into with mankind is this relationship where he pursues us out of the overflow of love in the Trinity created us and pursues us with love. And 1 John 4, 19 says it this way, we love because he first loved us. He loved us first before we ever existed, before we ever did anything. And being a God who's outside of time, he knows everything we're ever gonna do wrong. It doesn't surprise him. Like he's outside of time. He's eternal. He knows all, this, all the wrong things you've yet to do. And he's like, no, I've, I've set my heart on her. She's mine. He pursues us out of love. And it's just the most winsome thing in the world to be pursued by a loving God and to be able to get to love him in return is the greatest joy of my life. It sure is. Oh, mine too. 
Okay, it's time for our scripture memorization, although I think we need to memorize that verse that you just shared with us. That First we John love 4, because God first loved us. Yes, okay. But let's go to our, <laughs> our planned scripture reading. This is from 1 John 5, verses 1 and 2. So we're adding to it today. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father also loves the one born of him. This is how we know that we love God's children, when we love God and obey his commands. Wow. It's how we know we're his children. It's how we know we are a child of God is when we love God and obey his commands. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's not always hard, not always easy to do no. every day. <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> but he loves us so much. He's so patient with us. Yeah. Every day. Okay. As you're listening or watching, we want to hear your questions. Go to Candice.com and send us your questions, any questions, literally, um, whatever you want. It could be about this study, but it could also be about us. So at the end of this podcast season, we're going to host a special private live stream where we read your questions and we get to answer them and interact with you. And you'll get early access details through my weekly podcast email. So bring your questions to Candice.com and you'll also see a link where you can buy Tara Lee's study, He's Where the Joy Is. I highly recommend it that we are talking through this season one. Until next time, be grateful all day, every day. This has been a Candace Cameron Bure podcast, a production of Candy Rock Entertainment. Some of the products and services mentioned are paid promotions. Any advice should be confirmed with a qualified professional. Opinions and ideas are for entertainment purposes only and belong to Candy Rock Entertainment. All rights reserved. <laughs>